Hi, I'm Lisa and this is Threshold in China. Today we are going to share some exciting tech innovations and announcements that happened in China last week. Just as the US government is imposing new restrictions on the sale of advanced GPUs to China, aiming to hinder its development in AI, researchers from Tsinghua University have achieved a surprising breakthrough. They have developed an all-analog photoelectronic chip that promises to revolutionize high-speed vision tasks. The chip Axel combines electronic and light computing to achieve unprecedented energy efficiency and computing speed for vision-related processes, overtaking the current high-performance AI chips in these critical areas. Traditional digital computing units have long been limited by energy consumption and computing speed when handling vision tasks. Tasks such as image recognition for autonomous driving, robotics, medical diagnosis, and wearable devices require high-resolution imaging, precise classification, and ultra-low latency. Now, by integrating diffractive optical analog computing OAC, and electronic analog computing EAC, in a single chip, Axel achieved remarkable energy efficiency and computing speed. OAC is a method that manipulates the properties of light to perform computations such as its intensity through diffraction. EAC is another approach that uses electronic components to perform calculations in a way that mimics continuous physical quantities. These electronic signals vary in strength and can represent a range of values that is beyond 0 and 1. Both methods offer advantages for specific calculations and contribute to developing high-speed vision tasks. The chip, developed by China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation SMIC, achieved a computing speed of 4.6 petaflops in lab tests, with over 99% of the computations performed optically, and this is 3,000 times faster than the Vida's A100. Remarkably, it also uses 4 million less energy, so this ultra-low power consumption contributes to easing heat generation issues. Meanwhile, the A100 is subject to trade restrictions imposed by the US, so it cannot be exported to China. This breakthrough by the Tsinghua team holds profound significance as it integrates other high-performance computing techniques with existing electronic information systems. Researchers demonstrated that although the new chip cannot immediately replace those used in devices such as computers or smartphones, it may soon be used in wearable devices, electronic cars or smart factories and help boost China's competitiveness in mass application of artificial intelligence. For decades, traditional Chinese medicine has been seen through the lens of skepticism, often classified as pseudoscience. But now, researchers have discovered that the principles of traditional Chinese medicine is not that different when compared to contemporary medicine. In this study, researchers conducted a network mapping proteins associated with various symptoms and the target proteins of chemicals found in Chinese herbs. Target proteins are proteins in the human body that the chemicals in a particular Chinese herb can affect or interact with. When you have a symptom, what you can find in your body is a cluster of protein that can cause this discomfort. The team found that the closer the herb's target protein is to the cluster of protein, the more likely the herb is able to treat the symptom based on overlap. For example, the Chinese herb Stellaria root is used to treat fevers. The researchers found that its target proteins are located near proteins associated with fever regulations and inflammation. So, Stellaria root may work by influencing these fever-related processes. By analyzing this protein network, the research team showed the herbs prescribed in traditional Chinese medicine tend to have target proteins near the protein linked to the patient's symptoms. This proximity pattern is highly similar to a modern drug disease relationship, but traditional Chinese medicine figured this out some 3,000 years ago. The team validated the network using medical records from over 1,900 liver cirrhosis patients. While individual herbs have been scientifically studied before, this is the first research substantiating traditional Chinese medicine as a complete system. It provides evidence that this ancient practice may have scientific molecular mechanisms 
much like modern pharmacology. In 2015, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was rewarded to Tu Youyou, a Chinese chemist who discovered a malaria drug derived from a herb used in traditional Chinese medicine. The researchers hope that work will lead to further study and potential new drug discoveries inspired by traditional Chinese medicine. Scientists from the Chinese Academy of Science have revealed how vitamin C protects the spinal cord from aging in primates like monkeys and humans. To explain the findings, let's imagine the spinal cord as the body's main electrical cable. It sends signals that stir everything from movement to sensation. As we age, this cable can wear down and leads to slower communication between the brain and the body's nerve and less function. So what caused the cable to wear down? The researchers pinpointed the motor neurons as the most aging-sensitive cells. They mapped out the monkey's spinal landscape using single-cell sequencing and highlighted a new class of microglia growing around the aged motor neurons. These cells produce chip one protein, which accumulates like rust hindering motor neurons with the SMAD signal. Levels of this spinal rust also increased in aged monkeys and humans. Because the spinal cord controls muscles in our body, these insights may explain multi-system aging. Most importantly, the scientists found vitamin C can help to clear out this aging rust. It protects motor neurons from chit ones wear and tear. Taking vitamin C supplements for three years robustly reversed aging traits in aged monkeys' motor neurons. Likewise, in lab dishes, vitamin C also shielded human motor neurons from chit ones damage. Targeting chit one could yield new treatment for deteriorating conditions like ALS. Research efforts are ongoing to understand the underlying mechanisms and develop potential treatments. How do carbohydrates fit into a healthy diet? Central Cells University in China carried out a research that links the amount of carb we eat to a protein called Clotho, known for its connection to aging and health. They used data from over 10,000 American adults and discovered that too few or too many carbs are tied to lower Clotho levels, while moderate carbohydrates show the highest protein levels. The optical range for carbohydrate intake was found to be between 48.92% and 56.2% of the total energy intake. Shanghai Jiao Tong University also carried out a research on special type of carb known as the enter-resistant starch RS. It is found in cold potatoes, rice, beans, and whole grains. It is unique because it bypasses digestion in the small intestine and ferments in the large intestine, serving as fuel for gut bacteria and produce compounds that help regulate metabolism and reduce liver fat. Researchers discovered that RS can effectively reduce liver fat in patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease by modifying their microbiome. NAFLD affects a staggering number of people worldwide with no approved pharmacological treatments available. In a four-month clinical trial, individuals with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease were given RS. The reduction in liver fat was independent of weight loss, meaning that even without shedding pounds, the participants benefited from RS consumption. Food rich in resistant starch can be easily introduced in everyday meals. These findings emphasize the significance of a balanced diet in promoting a healthy condition and underscore the potential of everyday food choices in disease prevention and management. And that is all for today's Threshold. We hope you like this new section on science and technology in China. And as usual, we welcome your feedback and thoughts.